Hey guys, Chris Captures back again with a brand new video on the channel, this time talking not about manga, but about graphic novels and trade paperback comic books. Because I have a lot, I have a vast collection, it's much more extensive than my manga collection is, uh, but I've also been doing it a lot longer, so that's why. I'm going to split this video up into like two parts, but I don't know when the second part will come out, I'll do my trade paperbacks and my graphic novels. And then in another video, I'll do all my single issue comic books. I'll probably do some hauls and stuff before then, because there is a lot to cover somewhere out at CGC at the moment. So for now, we're just going to cover the comic books. And I hope you guys like this video. I know I've, been, I've just done two videos on manga, and that was really, really well received. And thank you guys for the support on that. So I hope you guys can support my comic book addiction just as much. And yeah, let's get to the books. Okay, guys, so I gave you a little bit of a look at the shelves last time but let's have a full look now got some pop vinyls on top they're the ones that I, I didn't fit on the shelves got my manga and a little star wars section here with mostly blu-rays i've got a pc game and my darth Vader. so then i've got more pop vinyls i've got an og not original but a very old school batmobile um got my dc books and then i've got my marvel books I've got my Blu-ray and DVD collection, starting off with all the MCU, heading through into the DC films and the, I don't know, the DC Extended Universe, like the animated stuff, stuff like that. Some um, anime, uh, I've got some more anime downstairs, I've got more Studio Ghibli and more of my films downstairs. Space Jam on VHS, it's an essential. Also, Spy Kids 3D on DVD with 3D glasses, everybody needs to have that. Uh, and then some more Star Wars older media that I didn't want to put up with my Blu-rays up top. Then if we come down another shelf, I've got my D&D and Pokemon stuff here. 25th anniversary, Pikachu and Mew. Then I'm into uh, Vertigo, a little bit of Dark Horse. Then I've got my Scott Pilgrims, Image comic books, and then some Independence. And then next shelf down. It's my Kingdom Hearts section. Got the Kingdom Hearts remake games there. Um, they are all there. Some of them are hidden behind. Got my books. Got Charizard here that my mate bought me for Christmas. So, Dan Brown. A lot of autobiographies from people that I like. American Psycho. I have a lot of film adaptations on here. The Hobbit has been read to death. That one's still got a bookmark from last time I was reading it, like two years ago. Yeah, some... Some photography and audio books there from when I was studying. And then on the bottom shelf, Pokemon TCG product and a lot of Magic the Gathering cards. So we're going to start here with my DC stuff. But wait, before we do, if you could leave a like and subscribe on this video, it would be much appreciated. Show your support. Let me know which content you want to see more of in the future, whether you like stuff like this, whether you want to see a bit more focused stuff instead of just my collections. But obviously, I'm not going to do collection videos every week because my collection is not going to change. Although this collection is already out of date. I've already bought some new stuff that hasn't arrived yet. So let's get into the DC books. Starting out, I really got into collecting during the New 52. Um, I was a teenager when it was coming out and stuff like that. So I was picking up a lot of New 52 product at the time. I had mostly collected little odd issues of Marvel before that. So we're starting off with Jeff John's run on Aquaman. I think this was a really good run. I only own two of the volumes, but I do plan to finish this run at some point. I think Jeff John's was doing great stuff during the New 52. And then we've got Batgirl by Gail Simone. I was very much fixated on the Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo Batman run, though. This was such a great run, starting with Course of Owls. And I've got up to Death of the Family. I have read the entire run, though, but I only own those ones. And the Death of the Family one I actually got in a box set with the Joker face mask. But that is in a box somewhere in the moving process. So, like I said, after that, we've got Batwoman. Uh, hydrology and to drown the world i heard great things about this run like i said these were the last ones that i picked up so i haven't got around to reading these yet um i heard quite good things about them so i picked them up i started getting into constantine roundabout now as well i had watched the keanu reeves movie of it when i was younger and liked that uh, and i had heard that it wasn't like 
a very faithful adaptation, but it was still good. So I checked out the New 52 run. I was also enjoying the Justice League Dark stuff, so I wanted to keep up to date with what Constantine was doing at the time. We've got a single issue of Earth 2 The Gathering, Volume 1. I've read this. It was good, but I don't think it was quite as good as I was hoping for. I haven't picked up any more of it yet. I think it did get a little bit better later on down the line, but it just wasn't something that I was ready to dive into yet. I might read it digitally and then figure out if I want to pick more of that up. Green Arrow Volume 1, Midas Touch. This was an okay reinventing of the Green Arrow mythos and stuff. I was watching Arrow at the time, so I picked this up. I'm not sure if this got better as it went on, so I didn't pick up any more of it at the moment. I might go back and read some earlier Green Arrow stuff, because I did like Arrow. More of sort of like the hard traveling heroes and stuff like that with Green Lantern. Good to go on to Green Lantern next because Green Lantern is one of my all time favorite comic book heroes. This is Green Lantern New Guardians. So this was obviously after Flashpoint and after Blackest Night. So we've got the emotional spectrum in there. And this was where Kyle Rayner got the White Lantern ring, I think, in the end. I like this run. I preferred the main Green Lantern run on this, but I do love Kyle Rayner. Kyle Rayner, one of my favourite Green Lanterns. It's probably tied by between him and Hal Jordan. So, moving on, I was also a massive fan of The Flash. So, I've got the New 52 Volumes 1 and 2 there. I have read past this, but I don't own it. I also, you'll notice that I might not have a lot of flash in here that's because i have a lot of single issues of flash as well so it's just not stuff that i've collected in trade paperback yet on to justice league i think everybody if they're a dc fan has plenty of justice league in the collection so this is the main justice league run by jeff johns starting out with origin which got turned into an animated movie this is them fighting against dark side uh the villain's journey throne of atlantis and the grid is the last one that i've got from there Pretty good run. I think Jeff Johns had a pretty good handle of all these characters at this point in time, and it was a nice retelling, like reimagining of the origin and updating the team in a pretty good way. We've then got Justice League of America because they separated Justice League and Justice League of America. So this was like a side team with Green Lantern, um, Catwoman, Green Arrow, and Vibe. So this is very much the vibe that got brought over into the Arrowverse and like I said Justice League Dark. Justice League Dark volumes were always really difficult when I was collecting my New 52 run to get hold of so this is the only one I own myself. But I did like this run it was pretty interesting. Like I said getting Constantine on a Justice League team with Swamp Thing, Night Nurse, Dead Man, stuff like that I think it was really good for the character to see a new updated twist on him. I really liked what they were doing with Swamp Thing at the time, so Justice League Dark's a pretty good run. Justice League 3000, this one came out later on in the run. I can't actually remember much about this. I did read it, but I didn't pick up any further. I think I got a couple single issues of Justice League 3000 when it first came out as well. And then now, if you see this, I'm a huge, huge Nightwing fan. So here we have Nightwing volumes 1 through 5. <laughs> This was by Higgins. I'm not sure what he's writing at the moment, but I really enjoyed this Nightwing run. It's nice to see him out on his own. If the one thing that the New 52 did right was sort of giving Dick Grayson more room to breathe within his own character, um, telling his own stories, having his own connection with the Court of Owls and stuff like that, and then obviously linking back in with Death of the Family and stuff like that still helped. Giving a lot more con context to his backstory and stuff and meant that he wasn't just relying on Batman and the extended Bat family to tell his own stories. He could actually stand on his own two feet as a character as well, which is kind of the whole point of Nightwing as a character for me, is him leaving the shadow of Batman, not being Robin anymore, and being Nightwing. So, yeah. Red Hood and the Outlaws. I was collecting a lot of the Bat family stuff and I like like Starfire from the Teen Titans. And Red Hood is a really cool character. Uh, I can't remember much about this run. Obviously, I wasn't 100% I wasn't on it, otherwise I probably would have had more than one volume. Next up is Swamp Thing, volume one. So what's this one called? 
rise from bones. This Swamp Thing run might be the best one other than Alan Moore's. This one introduces loads of new stuff. So it introduces the concept of the green, the rot, um, the black and stuff like that, which are all different. This was also written by Zack Snyder. Oh, Zack Snyder. Scott Snyder. This got really dark and grim and stuff like that, and I like that for Swamp Thing. It feels like it should be a horror series. So I really enjoyed that. I do want to collect more of it. I've read the th first three volumes, I think, so I want to collect the rest of it. I think they went up to, like, volume six or seven, maybe, of this run, and told, like, a fairly complete story with it as well, so... I want to pick more of that up. Then we got Superman and Wonder Woman Power Couple. I picked this up just to see what it was like. I ended up getting hardback copy because it was the same price. Pretty, pretty steamy cover there, guys. I wasn't a fan of this pairing. I don't know why they tried to shoehorn it in for a little bit. They always love to team, like, couple off Wonder Woman to all. Every time they do a retcon, they try and put her with one of the trinity one of the justice league whether it be batman or superman or stuff like that but i'm not a fan of wonder Bat or superman and wonder woman i think wonder woman has steve trevor and that's the way it should be sorry i think my allergies are also starting to kick off if you can hear anything weird going on with my voice we got deathstroke this was another volume one but this was just as the new 52 was ending they relaunched the deathstroke comic book this one came with a mask as well, Deathstroke mask. If you've seen my channel trailer from years ago, I was wearing that mask in it then. I like Deathstroke, really like him when he's used well. He can be a really interesting character. He's a great foil for the Teen Titans. So yeah, Wonder Woman War Torn. I think I got this one because this is the debut, I think, of her new costume that she got. I wasn't reading much Wonder Woman. I have read this entire run, but when I bought it, I just wanted this issue because it was the latest one out when I went to a shop in Edinburgh. So I thought I'd pick this up. I thought it was a pretty nice suit. I thought it was a pretty awesome costume, to be honest. So after that, we are on to Rebirth. So I like to keep mine in sort of like timeline order. And then I've got all my like one-offs and alternate universe stuff here in character alphabetical. Also, all these are in like series alphabetical as well. So we're on to Rebirth. I really liked the start of Rebirth, especially Superman. I've never enjoyed Superman so much, but we'll get to that in a second. Hell Jordan and the Green Lantern Core. So we had two different Green Lantern books at the time. We had Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Core, obviously following Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Core. And then we had a Green Lantern, a Green Lantern title as well, which I think I did have volume one of. I'm not sure where that is at the moment. Which followed Simon Baz and Jessica Cruz. They were the first time we had a duo of lanterns in charge of protecting Earth sector. So they were off doing their own journeys and figuring out how to be lanterns. And we had Hal Jordan doing his story as well. Uh, Bottled Light. There we go. We have Carl Rayner as a white lantern there. There's Hal Jordan in his glory. Um, I liked this but i prefer the tom king run that's been happening lately i really like tom king justice league the extinction machines i've got a lot of issue ones here because same with this i like to try out a lot of series figure out which ones are like when they do obviously these big reboots and stuff like that figure out which ones to carry on with i really enjoyed this i think i took this away to greece and read it so it was a good place to read it as well after that nightwing like i said i'm a big nightwing fan so i got two volumes of this i had to slow down when we're collecting a little bit save it up to buy a house and stuff like that so a lot of these i do really enjoy the runs and i want to read more of but i just had to slow down for a bit so we've got Nightwing issue one and then issue two back to Bloodhaven. This was a really cool story. It was like a globe trotting mystery. Um he teamed up with some possible villains, possible allies. That was a pretty good run. I do want to finish it because I haven't actually read past volume two. Next up was Superman. I've I've always liked Superman as a character, but I felt like I couldn't find the right stories for me. But this run here. So I've got, what, one through six? I so, so, so much. I love this. So it starts off with Son of Superman, um, Trials of the Super Sons, Multiplicity, um, Black Dawn. So if you notice on all these covers, we've got Jonathan Kent there as well. Hopes and Fears, and then Imperious Lex. So that tied in with Action Comics. 
So I wasn't keeping up with action comics, so this last volume lost me a little bit when they started to cross over a lot more. But the other five, I think, were solid. Even by themselves, you could pick them up and read them as an individual story. But I love seeing Superman as a dad. I think it was a perfect progression for the character, which we needed. They kept toying with it for a while. But we've got a full run here of six issues. I think they went up to, like, volume 10 or volume 8, something like that. So nice to see seeing super Superman's, like, human side and... Then also after to teach his son the same lessons that he had to teach and learn about himself in the process as well. There's some really nice standout issues in here. There's one where he's working with sick children as well and stuff like that. And it's such a heartwarming story. They go on like a, a road trip of the US as well, I think, for Memorial Day and stuff like that. And the 4th of July, I think that was really cool. Teen Titans, Damien Knows Best. I wanted to try this out because I really like the Teen Titans. This one was okay, but I really enjoyed the Titans run in Rebirth. Bringing back Wally West, because like I said, I love The Flash. Because I love Barry Allen and I love War Wally West. They are my two Flashes. Anyone else, not as good. So this was... Wally West was finally back, and we really love to see it. We got Donna Troy in there. We got like a star-studded Titans team here, so I really enjoyed that. Here we have Wonder Woman, the first three volumes of Wonder Woman. Um, this was really interesting how they released it. I think it was alternate weeks. They were telling two different stories and two different timelines, which then linked up. They had different artists. Yeah, you had Greg Rucker and Sharp, and then you had Greg Rucker and Scott. Um, telling two different stories. So you had the year one storyline going, and then you had tr the truth, uh, the lies, the truth. And I can't remember what the third one in that story arc was. I really enjoyed the storyline, finding out some truths and like finally getting like a lockdown version of Wonder Woman's story that I think they're going to use from now on because that was what Rebirth was all about. is about establishing continuity and getting things back to a status quo. So explaining what Wonder Woman's origin actually is instead of sort of dicking about with it and changing it. Is she a god? Is she not? Is she made from clay? Is she a love child of Zeus and Hippolyta? So they finally finally nailed it down. I think it's a pretty good run. It really allowed me to get back into Wonder Woman because I haven't really read much other than the Perez run. So I actually do collect the Perez run, but not. I need to get trade paperbacks because I just have random single issues at the moment. So onto my expanded universe DC stuff. Like I said, it goes in alphabetical order of characters again. So we've got Batman, Arkham Asylum, hardcover by Grant Morrison. I love Grant Morrison's work. I think this was a really cool, interesting book. You got Batman, The Black Mirror by Scott Snyder and Jock. This was just before the New 52 reboot, I believe. This was when Dick Grayson was Batman. Like I said, I love Dick Grayson and Nightwing, so this was a must-read for me. And he gets to really flex as Batman in this and shows his strengths and why he is the worthy successor of the Batman title in this. That's why I think, anyway. Dark Knight Returns. I haven't got the other Frank Miller books yet. I do like them. Yeah, I just haven't picked them up yet. I've, I know the story. I, I just haven't felt the need to reread them anytime soon. So I haven't felt the need to own my own copies yet. Uh, Batman Earth 1. I've only got volume 1 of this. When I got this, it was only volume 1 that was out. I think we're on to volume 3 of this now. Batman Hush. One of the definitive Batman storylines that you need to read. Batman The Killing Joke by Alan Moore. Like I said, huge Alan Moore fan. You can't have a Batman collection without having... A copy of the killing joke this is one of the anniversary editions as well the deluxe edition introduction by tim sale and it's got loads of like it's got some like essays and stories and letters from behind the scenes making the killing joke and um alan moore's like opinion on what the killing joke is about because people like to argue about it uh last year when i was down south i managed to find this batman son of the demon for like dead cheap so i got this Batman Under the Red Hood. This is the comeback of Jason Todd as Red Hood after he was killed by the Joker. So onto my Green Lantern section here. Like I said, huge Green Lantern fan. So I've got Blackest Night here. I actually just got a delivery of loads of Blackest Night single issues. And it also comes with the two graphic novels. It comes with the Black Lantern Core, I believe, graphic novel and this. So I will have a copy of this for sale soon because uh, I don't need two copies of it. But I love this storyline. Bringing back all the dead heroes as Black Lanterns and stuff was really interesting. Just seeing Green Lanterns versus a basically super-powered zombie army. Pretty cool. 
And it also brought back a load of heroes ready for Flashpoint and Rebirth. This was maybe the second comic book I ever owned. This was the first Green Lantern book I ever owned. Emerald Knight's Green Lanterns. So this is Hal Jordan and Kyle Rayner, one of their first team-ups after, obviously, the whole Emerald Twilight storyline and stuff like that. So I got this at a car boot sale when I was a kid. Haggled the guy down a little bit because I was a little kid and I just battered my little puppy dog eyes at him. War of the Green Lanterns, Aftermath. So this takes place after War of the Lanterns. I have, I think, War of the Green Lanterns single issue somewhere. Um, I got this as a gift from Comic Con, I think. So, um, my girlfriend's family came with us and they picked me this up for my birthday because my birthday was straight after Comic Con. Then I've got Injustice Year One. I do like the Injustice story, but this story is so massive, I've just not delved any deeper than Year One at the moment. Uh, Superman American Alien by Max Landis. We don't talk about that guy anymore. He is very much cancelled on the internet now. But I think this was a pretty good story at the time. Really bringing out the humanity in Superman. The death of Superman. Anyone with a Superman collection needs the death of Superman. It also ruined single issue comic books as an industry. So thanks for that, guys. My last few here, I've got all three Earth One Superman books. I think these tell an okay story. It's got ups and downs to the quality of it. Um, but it is a nice three part story. Yeah, I read all three of these on a plane ride. An evening flight plane ride back from Greece. It was a pretty good read. Considering I couldn't sleep, I just stayed up and read all of these. And then Teen Titans Earth 1 by Jeff Lemire. I got this when it came out because, like I said, big Teen Titans fan. But I have not read it yet. I think they released two volumes of this. Got mixed reviews. So that's all my DC stuff. Uh, I think I may have talked a bit too much about some of that stuff, so I'm going to probably edit that down and try and go through my Marvel stuff a bit faster. There also isn't nearly as much Marvel stuff. I was a big Marvel fan, mostly when I was younger. I loved the X-Men. But a lot of it's been adapted, and I know the stories and stuff like that, so I just haven't picked them up yet. A lot of them that I read digitally as well, or got from the library when I was a kid. I just haven't gone out of my way and bought them myself yet. So this was the first graphic novel I ever, ever owned. I got this from a local store or something like that. I was getting into comic books and Spider-Man and stuff like that, so I just picked up a random issue. This is volume four in this run of Earth's Mightiest Heroes, Avengers, Lionheart of Albion. So this is the rebirth of the new female Captain Britain after she dies trying to protect Captain America. I thought this was a pretty cool storyline. I loved it as a kid. Or it's because it was like the only comic book that I owned, so I used to read it all the time. I think it could have some influence on maybe... Maybe the MCU going forward. I could see them maybe doing a female Captain Britain instead of diving into a male one. We've got uh, Black Knight and stuff coming and they probably don't want too many characters too similar. Then we have Mighty Avengers Venom Bomb. A random book that I just picked up again when I was younger. Really like Venom. Basically the symbiote goes wild in New York, turns a load of people into Venom symbiotes and stuff like that. And it's basically the Avengers trying to stop that disaster. Then we got Avengers vs. X-Men, an event from a couple of years ago. Like I said, I'm a big fan of the X-Men. This was a cool story, which led into sort of like a, a big change for the X-Men at the time. Splitting the team up into two and basically causing a huge devastating event. Loved the Phoenix Saga and stuff like that. So this was like a successor to that with um, many of the X-Men becoming under the influence of the Phoenix Force, which was pretty cool. We got to see... A really awesome version of Cyclops, I think, and a cool version of Magneto. Then, after the Guardians came out, I decided to pick up Volume 1 and Volume 2. They are different dressings on the spines, but Volume 1 and Volume 2 are Guardians of the Galaxy. This was when Iron Man was with him, sort of like trying to reboot the story a little bit. The introduction of Angela, or I, th I think that's her name, into the MCU. She was previously in like, the Spawn comic books. So that was interesting to see her come over to the MCU and potentially could see her in Love and Thunder or a future Guardians or Thor franchise. Then Runaways. I was a big fan of this book when I was a kid. Again, because it was one of the few that I had. Like you can see, it's been worn to death. I got this when a store near me was closing down. Teenage Wastelands. This was volume one. Um, they didn't do too many in this run, but it was by Brian K. Vaughan. Love Brian K. Vaughan. 
Yeah, pretty good book. Uh, it made like a little love affair for me with the younger teenage heroes. I already liked the Teen Titans and then Runaways, Young Avengers, stuff like that. It all kind of sparked from this volume of The Runaways. Speaking of which, we had the Secret Invasions tie-in for The Runaways and Young Avengers where they end up crossing over. That's pretty cool seeing all these characters together. Secret Wars, this is the newest Secret Wars from, what, 2016, something like that, by Jonathan Hickman. I thought this was a pretty cool story. Again, I read it in the sun on holiday, so maybe that made it seem a lot better than it was, but I really enjoyed it. I thought the artwork was great. All the covers by Alex Ross were great as well. Seeing Doom, the reintroduction of Fantastic Four and stuff like that, I thought was pretty damn cool. Merging the Ultimates in there and all the different universes, getting to see... I love when we get to see multiverse shenanigans and the... the um, it doesn't show us the covers on the back, but the four core and stuff like that. That's pretty cool. Amazing Spider-Man coming home. I think most people end up with this in the collection because this came out in magazines in the UK and you could pick it up for like two quid for this first volume and then you had to pay like 15 quid a volume after that. It was like a subscription thing. So everybody just seemed to get this for like two pound. So I think everybody's got that in their collection. The Unworthy Thor, this is the Jason Aaron run. I really want to collect more of this. I do know the story, I've read it online. Again, not picked it up because this came out at a time where I was slowing down buying comic books. This was also when Jane Foster was becoming Thor, so she was in the main Thor title and this was the Unworthy Thor. Uh, another one that I got when a local store was closing down, this was Ultimate Secret by Warren Ellis, part of the Ultimate Galactus trilogy. This was a pretty mad story when I just dove into it partway through and didn't really know what was going on because these were all different versions of the characters. So, kind of nutty to read as a kid. I didn't follow it properly, but I'll probably have to reread this now that I've read a bit more of the Ultimate Universe. Like I said, big fan of the X-Men, so it's pretty much all X-Men from here out. Got the Uncanny X-Force. They did like a big reboot of all the titles. So this has got like Phantom X, Psylocke, Storm and stuff like that on the team. So I've got the first two volumes of that. I'm a huge Psylocke fan. Uh, problematic character at time, but I think her design's really cool and her powers. I've got the new Jonathan Hickman run, volume one. I haven't read this yet because this is new to my collection. I can't wait to read this because I, I did read Swords of X and Powers of X going into this. The Grant Morrison Imperium. This is one of the first comic books I ever read. I used to get a magazine in the UK and each week or each month it would have... Um, one issue from this run in it and this was the run the ones that i used to read separately so this is volume two so i've read like one two and three of all this do you need to get more of this because i love grant morrison and i love the x-men so following on from that this was when they split the x-men off into a bunch of different teams then we had x-force or no x-men and uncanny x-men at the time this is following on from avengers versus x-men so you got all new x-men brought back the original team through time yeah this is like the fallout from avengers versus x-men here to stay so that was like the main x-men team and then cyclops left and formed his own splinter group with magneto and magic emma frost it was sort of like a an amalgamation of the x-men and the brotherhood there wasn't really a villain group at the time so it was mostly most of these conflicts were between the way that Scott was sort of radicalised now and leading the Uncanny X-Men versus the, the all-new X-Men. Young Avengers, Style Over Substance by Kieran Gillen. I do like Kieran Gillen's work. I've got his Darth Vader right there as well. I thought this was a pretty cool run. We had Young Loki and stuff like that. And I already really loved Children's Crusade storyline and stuff like that. So I wanted to pick this up. I love Wiccan as a character. I think he's a really cool character. And this was, I think, the first time America Chavez was on the team. Obviously, she's coming up from Multiverse of Madness. Volume 2 of uh, Darth Vader, Kieran Gillen run. So, final little bit now, moving down to this bottom shelf. We have my indies. And obviously not indie indies, but smaller print labels and stuff like that. So, I've got a little indie that I put at the front here just because it was a small volume. So this is video. This is like a short stock book um, by Stephen R. Boole. Um, this is from, is it Stephen Larson on Machinima back in the day? He released 
this like years later like he released it years ago but then years later he sort of like spoke about it again and he was like oh yeah i'm gonna like sell them off dead cheap to like fund a new project because he had loads of these books in his garage so pick one of this up it's got like a one-of-a-kind drawing inside as well so i just picked it up i haven't read it yet but it seemed like an interesting thing and it was super cheap i basically just had to pay for shipping really i've got sandman so I love Neil Gaiman as a writer anyway. I've always loved his stories. I really liked Sandman. I read volume one years and years and years ago. And then when Overture was coming out, I decided to really get into Sandman. And yeah, I picked up volume one, volume two, which I've read them both. I just haven't had time to get three and four. Every time I go to like a local shop, they're always out of stock or they seem to be out of stock online whenever I look for them. I think I just got really bad timing when it comes to the Sandman books. But... We are getting a Netflix show of this soon, so I'm super excited for that. I'm gutted we're not getting Joseph Gordon-Levitt in the role. I think he would have been perfect. Nevertheless, this is a really cool, bizarre series. If you're a fan of Constantine, this ties in with it. and I think you'll really love it. It follows Morpheus, who is like the embodiment of dreams. And he is the Sandman that brings people sleep and lets their subconscious drift off. And it's pure psychedelic. It's so cool. I haven't read Overture yet. I got this when it came out because it was a deluxe edition and they said it was going to be very limited stock. So I got this gorgeous hardcover. The cover underneath the slipcase is really nice. I'll show it you at some point if I ever do a Sandman video. But yeah, I've only read up to volume three in total. So once I read all, I think there's nine volumes of this, then I'll read this because this brings the story back in a big loop to the first one. I didn't want the other stuff spoiling for me by reading this one. So I haven't read Overture yet. Then Why the Last Man, Volume 1 and 2. I really want to read more of this. It's fantastic. It's such an interesting concept. Again, Brian K. Vaughan, I think he's absolutely fantastic writer, especially when it's like genre sci-fi stuff. I think he's great. Uh, this is being made into a film by FX, no, no, a film, a series. Season 1 comes out on September 13th. So after that, I've got Volume 1 and Volume 2 of Vox Machina Origins, the Critical Role comic book. Well, the first Critical Role comic book. They've done more since then, and we've got more coming out really soon. First one is going to follow Jester from the Mighty Nine, which is Campaign 2, which has just wrapped up. I haven't finished it yet because I'm a little bit behind. But I've got my little Keyleth and Grog to go with my Vox Machina stuff. Can't wait for them to bring out Mighty Nine Pop Vinyls. Also, the Grog Hot Toys, I think it is, looks absolutely stunning. Sideshow Collectibles, I think it is, actually. Absolutely stunning. I want to get that. Scott Pilgrim, I've had this since like high school, so these are battered now. I love this series. I got into it just before they announced the film, which is weird timing for me. Um... Loved it. it. They kind of look like manga. A lot of people think it is a manga, but it's not. Um, cool art style. Birth, such a good film. One of my mates actually borrowed it and got like this volume all water damaged. So I do need to get a new volume five. What I might do is I might get the hardback colour versions because he re-released it in colour. Um, Brian Lee O'Malley. And I want to read some of his other stuff. I think he's got one called Seconds. And then he's been working on another series. Oh, it's Snot Girl right there. I've already got volume one over there. Like I said, big fan of Kieran Gillen. So I've got Die here. Volume one and volume two. I've only just got volume two the other day. Uh, I don't believe volume three is out yet. This is a really cool story, especially if you're into tabletop RPGs and D&D uh, &D and stuff. I think he was very much riding, riding that D&D &D hype when he started writing this. I just stumbled across this in my local Waterstones, which is uh, a bookstore in the UK. Stumbled across it, knew Karen Gillan's work, just started playing D&D &D again, so I picked this up. Loved it. It's such a dark, twisted version of, like, D&D um, &D and, like, an isekai story, so being teleported into another world and stuff like that, but the, the dark side of it, like, you never think, like... Everyone thinks, oh, once you go back to the normal world, like everything's hunky dory and stuff like that. But imagine being a kid and being thrown into like the body of these other races, other genders, adult characters and stuff like that, and then having to live in this absolutely brutal world for 
what I think it was like ten years or something they were trapped in there for, and then all of a sudden having to come back and readjust to standard Earth life and stuff. It, it was such a cool exploration. Uh, so yeah, I've got volume two here called Split the Party. Really interesting, really interesting story that I'd highly recommend to anybody who's a fan of fantasy, isekai. Yeah, just a really, really interesting story that tackles a lot of different difficult to cover subjects i think it does it really gently at times as well uh, eloquently you could say so yeah outcast season volume one then we've got saga volume one and two i want to read so much more of this because i read these in a day they are enthralling like i said brian k vaughan is a genius i think these books are absolutely phenomenal just weird weird in-depth sci-fi fiona staples artwork and lettering is incredible i really want to read more of this everyone should re read in saga even if you're not massive into sci-fi you should just give it a try because i think it's got enough depth in there that'll draw you in like i said brandley o'malley's snot girl walking dead volumes one through ten everybody knows the walking dead i don't need to talk to you about that it's been one of the biggest tv shows for years kieran gillen i've got a signed copy, a little signed art print, and I think the book itself is signed on the inside. Uh, Kieran Gillen's The Wicked and the Divine, Volume 1. Every 90 years, 12 gods return as young people. They are loved, they are hated. In two years, they are all dead. What happens now? It happens again. So, yeah. Pretty interesting story. I haven't read enough of it to really make my opinion up on it. I know people love it. It's been going on for quite a while. Um... Yeah, I, I liked Neil Gaiman's American Gods, so I thought I'd check this out. Like I said, I haven't read enough of it yet to have a full opinion on it yet. Then we've got Witches by jo Scott Snyder. I haven't read this. I got this when this first came, it came out because people were hyping it up. Not read it yet. I'll get around to it eventually. Archie, I got really into like Riverdale and stuff like that. And this was Mark Wade came over to the Archie comic books and sort of like reinvented it for the new age it's sort of like an anthology not all all the stories tie in but the way they're told and stuff like that are very all over the place again fiona staples doing the art for it so you can see from the cover it looks very much like saga and then finally the last one that i'll talk about on the shelves is lock and key and then finally the last two i'll leave you with aren't actually on my shelf because they're a little bit damaged they are books that i picked up years ago like this one is the Simpsons Comics Royale, just a random Simpsons one, but it's got like coffee stains and stuff on, but I, I got it for like 50p at a car boot sale or a, what is it, flea market, you call it in America. Yeah, I picked this up when I was a kid. It's just like an anthology of different, different Simpsons stories. This one was one of the first comic books I ever owned. Mighty Avengers, Secret Invasion tie-in. I loved Secret Invasion. This was written by Brian Michael Bendis, so it was really cool. Um. I was reading a lot of Avengers at the time and Secret Invasion. I've read the single issues multiple times. They are battered. But this got chewed on by my first dog. It was poking out a little bit from the TV stand that I had. And he just decided to go to absolute town on it. So these two aren't on the shelves because of the, the beat up. Wow, that was, that was a long one. And like I said, this collection video is already out of date because... I've got some other stuff on the way. I've got that box next to me that I haven't unpackaged yet. I'm probably going to do a haul video that you might see in the next week. Um, that's got some graphic novels in there too. But yeah, massive DC fan, as you can see. When it comes to comic books, I normally stick to my DC. Love my Marvel stuff as well. I'm just a little bit more picky as to what I pick up. And yeah, indies, I'm always willing to give stuff a try. Sometimes they do sit on the shelf for a little bit before I end up getting around to them but yeah thank you for sticking with this longer video I, I didn't realize i was going to waffle on that much but hopefully i cut it down so it's more palatable for you guys let me know what you guys think of the collection let me know what you think of my taste do i have trash taste do you like some of the books that i've got uh, what should i carry on collecting what new books should i try out judging on my taste what storylines would you suggest that i pick up and read uh, chances are I've read a lot of the main ones from like DC and Marvel. I just don't own them, but still drop it down in the comments and I'll, I'll, I might pick it up at some point, give it a reread or something like that. Thank you for watching, everybody. Like I said, answer those questions in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. 
check out my Twitch, check out the Get Real podcast where we talk about pop culture, films and TV shows. We talk a lot about the MCU and nerdy stuff like that, Star Wars, all those sorts of films. We also cover more uh, not-so-nerdy films as well. But yeah, thank you for all the love and support. Don't forget to like and, like and subscribe. Turn on that notification bell so you know when I post a new video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.